let's talk about the best ways to spend your time the few days before a raid happens. If you want to know how to level fast and get might quickly, this is your video. Greetings and salutations, killers. Welcome back. We're talking about Dragalia Lost. They're ready to give us a new raid here, and I want to share with you guys how I'm spending my time building adventures and stockpiling resources. So if you're like me, you have at least one go-to adventure in every single color. And this is the first time I realized that they're all girls. Wow. Uh, also, if you're like me, you also have a fantastic beard and you have three kids, a spouse, two cats, a guinea pig, and none of them are boys. Wow. That's crazy. My real life and my game life are just so merging together right now, it's a little terrifying. So raids give you the opportunity to use a brand new four star hero. They let you have access to it during the raid, and if you build up their loyalty score completely, you get to keep that. I'm gonna be talking to you about how I'm gonna stockpile resources so I could use that brand new four star hero to the fullest, because they tend to really go into the raid being the unit you want to use. Although if you're sitting there going, I don't care about that hero, I have other heroes. I want to go ahead and advance or I want to make a team this is going to help you out regardless uh, you just have to adjust a few minor things here and there for what I'm talking about since I'm going to be specifically talking about developing a four star hero uh, that sort of just falls into your lap out of the blue this is also an important distinction because I'm going to throw a few time frames and numbers at you and three star versus four star versus five star have all kinds of different requirements for what they need to advance. So just so you know, uh, if it's three star, you probably need a little less on certain things. If it's five star, you're obviously going to need a little more. So it would be great if you could just use the newest hero to their fullest right away, which means I'm not going to talk about unlocking them to their fifth uh, tier in the five stars, but you know, they have five man or four mana circles you have access to out of the five, and it would just be nice to have all of that maxed and then be level 70 and ready to go. So what are you talking about resource wise for this? Well, you're talking like 115,000 mana. That's... Like, I don't even understand that number. I've never seen that much mana all at once. Uh, anyway, so you ha you're also talking like 162-ish normal orbs, 32 tier 2 orbs, uh, under 10, like 8 or so tier 3 orbs, one rainbow orb uh, in order to continue to progress and unlock all these uh, mana rings. Uh, you're also talking something to the order of like 50, 55 scales. And you're also talking about 15 Gliss scales. So when it comes down to it, that's a lot of resources to unlock everything. Um, the most stringent one here that we're talking about, though, uh, is the mana. The rest you can find easily. The scales always suck getting, in my opinion. But I mean, uh, all the scale types can come from uh, the Dragon Trials. All the ore types come from the Elemental Ruins. Uh, so we know we're going to go there and get all that stuff. But we're also accruing mana along the way. And if this hero is just dropping into your lap, uh, you want to have some crystals so that you can level them up quickly, uh, especially through those first few levels. So let's go ahead and talk about how I attack these problems. The main board we're going to be grinding here is Avenue to Power. Now, if you're an established player, you're sitting there going, that's terrible advice. You don't want to grind on that level. Hold on. It's going to make sense. I'm coming at this uh, with three ideas in mind. The first one is that you are just getting this new hero and you want to level them up quickly. You need crystals. That's how that goes. Uh, the second and biggest reason that I want to talk about this has to do with mana. Now you get about 350 mana per completion of this board. Uh, there's a couple other ones to give this to you, but really this is one of the best mana producing boards you can go into for the stamina cost. And I'm even talking about during events where you get extra mana as you grind on outside of like the initial burst of all the prizes this game throws at you whenever you first start an event. Uh, this is something very noteworthy to look at because if you take a look at this, um, you uh, to get 1,115 mana at 350 mana gain a pop, you're talking about spending nearly 5,000 stamina. I like don't even understand that number. 
So let's come at this from a different perspective. You don't need to have these heroes maxed out on level or anything else really for them to be super useful uh, for you going into this, especially if this is like your first set of heroes or your first uh, hero that's really strong of that particular color. You just need somebody who's capable. And somebody who's capable uh, is going to have a couple of uh, attributes, and one of them is they're going to have around B level uh, 60 ish. Uh, the second thing is, is that you're going to unlock at least two, preferably in my opinion, three whole mana rings. And that drastically reduces things. That's going to cut our mana consumption in half. Really, you're down to like about. Uh, 55,000 there and all the other resources I mentioned earlier are cut down to maybe about a third of what I mentioned so uh, that's a lot more reasonable goal uh, so what you're talking about spending really close to 2,500 stamina now that's still a lot but we can manage this throughout the day from refreshes there is 240 stamina coming your way now, you might be playing at enough time where you don't get full advantage of that, but for the sake of easy math, I'm going to stick to this, assuming that you get everything. You have enough stamina coming to you, which is roughly 80 per day, uh, whenever the day starts, and then you go ahead and get every single stamina and use it. You sleep, you repeat, you can get 240 a day. Now, you can also refresh your stamina every day. And while you could go for quite a while if you want to, when it comes down to it, the first three refreshes every day only uses 40 Wormite or Diamondite. That's what I recommend that you do is you go ahead and use those first three refreshes. That's important. Another thing to factor in is if you're not super high on your player level, you're going to level, you're going to get a refresh on stamina, and that's very important. So between the refresh on stamina, you buying packs of stamina, and what you could get every uh, throughout the day just because it accrues, you can get to your target goal within four days. Four days. Wow, that's still a lot of grinding for mana. Now, of course, like I said, Avenue of Power is the most beneficial from a mana consumption standpoint as well but as i mentioned before you don't need to have them maxed out at level 70 to have your four star be super powerful it's neat i like to do that myself but really you're talking about uh, spending an awful lot of time here and if you have absolutely terrible luck with the randomness you will have just over what you need in crystals to bring them to level 70. If you have average luck, however, it's going to only take you about two days to get there. But here's the shtick. The way the experience tiers as you go up, you actually have enough to get them to 65-ish, maybe? Maybe 60? After only one day of grinding on Avenue of Power. You have enough crystals to bring them up to a level that is quite useful for an event like this. So what I recommend that people do is I recommend that they grind on Avenue to Power for one whole day. Uh, it's also really nice because you could just hit the auto on this one, and it's super easy to auto. You don't have to manage a darn thing. You just make sure that you have a light character there to trash things up. And the team that you build the auto on this might as well be filled with other units that you think you might use in the raid uh, because they're going to accrue experience, and it's going to cut down on the cost of uh, crystals that you're going to be spending on them later on. So it's a complete win-win. It's actually really smart to do it this way. So you go through your one day, you get your crystals, you've leveled up the rest of your team. Maybe you go ahead and grind another day to give the other people some crystals and more experience if you want. So no more than two days are spent on that particular avenue. Because the other avenue to fortune actually gives you the same yield for mana, but it gives you a lot of rupees. That's awesome. Also, the elemental ruins, while it is not as good on the mana it's really darn close and you're gonna need orbs anyway to keep on building things near halidom because guess what uh you get to raise those elemental statues and anything else that you have back home in the halidom that's gonna add to your might your strength all your overall effectiveness don't forget about them i'm not gonna focus on them just remember you know they exist and they help a lot so you're going to be grinding on the other avenue, Avenue to Fortune, and you're going to be going through the Elemental Ruins. Which one specifically? Well, that slightly depends upon what weapon your new four-star hero uses. Your hero needs to have a weapon, and this weapon is going to help them out tremendously from a strength and a might standpoint. It's also very important that you make a tier two or elemental weapon in this particular case, because you need to give them another attack. I'm not going to go too much in depth in that there's a card right now if you want to listen to my advice on the previous raid 
uh, that was out there, and that's going to give you an idea of why. So you'll be able to keep up the pace of mana acquisition by spending all of your stamina every day and you're still going to go ahead and make progress towards other weapons and other things there. You can go and just craft it together. You're doing the rupees, you're doing the uh, the stuff from the elemental ruins. Saturday and Sunday, at least in the EST time zone, are the wonderful days for this so that you can go ahead and pick and choose what elemental uh, ruin that you're going to for the weapon type you're making. It's very, very handy in that way. You want to grind Avenue to Power one or two days Pops. After that, you want to spend the other two to three days before the raid grinding out to get rupees and to get the gear that you need to make your weapon for your new heroes. This is going to put you on great footing, and no matter what heroes you decide to put into that team, whether it's brand new ones, ones that you've summoned that you just want to go ahead and start to build, or maybe somebody you feel like you have to out of obligation, this is going to put them on fantastic footing. It's going to give you a nice collective might score that's going to continue to rise through the event, and also rise as you can increase everything through the Haladum, and you're going to be able to get to all the content. You're going to start to dominate and win. It is going to be great. Now, if you want to know whether it's better to have a tier 2 weapon or an elemental weapon that is of a lower rarity, go and click on the card that's on the screen right now. You can also click on this other card if you want to know whether or not it's worthwhile to actually invest in your 3 star heroes. And do me a favor, if you like your Dragalia Lost information hot and fresh like Grandma's cookies, hit that subscribe button. My name is Deltran. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate all of you. And until next time, take it easy.